Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the new 14 inch MacBook Pro, specifically my street photography workflow and how I use this MacBook Pro to organize, edit, backup, and basically be the central hub for all of my photography going forwards. For the last six months, I've been using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro as my main photo editing device. Prior to that, I was on the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro, which was just a slog. And for the last 10 days, I've been on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which felt like a breath of fresh air. I've now migrated my entire photography workflow to this MacBook Pro, and I'm gonna share that with you down to every single detail, every single feature I switch on, all the gear, basically everything. Let's start with the MacBook, of course, and this is the 14 inch, specifically the second pre-built version that you can get that in the UK is 2,400 pounds. It comes with the better 10 core CPU. The Pro one has 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte SSD. The second device is my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I went for the bigger screen because I use this quite a lot and it's easier on the eyes. And I also went for the 512 gigabyte um, internal memory for the simple reason is that I will also use this phone to edit photos, but mainly to import and to cull photos if I don't have my laptop with me. But more on that later. In terms of dongles, I'm happy to say that this is no longer a case but it still is because I still got a few. So the first one is a USB-C to the to, uh, ethernet port. Um, some hotels that I've been to, the Wi-Fi was a bit weak, but then if you plug it into the ethernet, um, it seemed okay. So that comes with me um, if I travel mainly. Uh, the next dongle is a Lightning to SD card, which then allows me to connect SD cards into my phone. And finally is a small USB-A to USB-C anchor adapter, um, just in case I still meet someone who uses old USB-A, I think it's called, um, and I need to plug it in. Uh, but so far, I've never actually had to use it. Next up, I have the Wacom graphics tablet, which I connect to the laptop via Bluetooth, and then I can use the pen for any intricate editing work, such as brush work, um, cloning things out, or in painting things out. It's absolutely fantastic for that, and it fills that void that's been left since using my iPad. In terms of storage, I've got two hard drives. I've got an SSD, like a really quick one by, who are they, SanDisk. And then I've got a four terabyte um, generic WD hard drive that I will use as my like really kind of long-term backup that I hardly ever touch. And finally, we have power and charging. So I use these small 60 watt Minix chargers. Now they can charge the MacBook as well because it's the 14 inch. Sure, they take you know twice as long to charge it as the conventional MagSafe charger. Um, however, it's so much smaller, it's so much easier to carry with me and the battery's so good on it that I don't really need to worry about day charging it. So I just leave it to charge overnight. It's all charged up in the morning and it's all good. Cables, I just use these anchor braided cable, USB-C to USB-C cables. I've had them for quite a few years now. They're wicked. Um, batteries, I'll have two batteries depending on where I'm going or and for how long. So I've got a very large anchor uh, battery pack. I think it's like 2600, something like that could be wrong. Um, and that can actually charge the 14 inch MacBook pretty much from empty to full once. So it's definitely good for those times where I will be out for a while and I'll be editing. And I've got a very small anchor charger, which is mainly for my phone um, or my camera if I'm out and about and I don't have my laptop with me. My main editing, cataloging, organizing and backing up software is Lightroom, specifically the normal version of Lightroom and not the classic. I tried classic a few times. I tried my best to like it, but I just find it a bit bloated and it's just not for me. Um, I like the normal Lightroom because it's very clean. It only has the features that you really need. I think only like uh, camera calibrations missing, um, but it does everything I needed to do. Also, there is an identical app for my iPhone. And the best thing is it all syncs to the um, Adobe Cloud, which is where I store all of my raw photos. At the moment, I only have a terabyte of storage, which is like the minimum that you get with this particular plan. However, four years worth of photos are only using up about 500 gigabytes um, because I'm very selective with what I keep. So this will definitely keep me going for another year or two. And then after that, to upgrade to like three terabytes, it's not that much more money. In my opinion, it's worth every penny. Next up, I have Affinity Photo, which is my sort of Photoshop replacement app. 
Take Photoshop, but make it a lot more responsive, a lot faster to use. Remove some bloated video features that you just don't need in a photo editor. Reduce the price tag to a one-time purchase of like 40 quid, and you have an absolutely wicked Photoshop replacement type of app. I've used it, God, four or five years now, and I absolutely love it. And finally, I have the Apple iCloud Photos app. I've got about two terabytes of storage there. Um, that's included in the plan that I have. And that stores the final JPEG versions of all of my photos. It's mainly there as, let's say, an extra level of security, but also as an easy way to share photos on any device. And last but not least on my phone, I have an app called Darkroom, which is for adding wide borders and an app called Unfold, which I use to make all my Instagram stories. Let's start with the main library and I only have one. So previously I used to have multiple libraries for different years. However, I just found it to be a bit too confusing the moment I got over three, four years. So I've combined them all into one library and in the same time, just culled a bunch of photos. And now it's simply organized by the location, or sorry, the country. And within that country is the city, the town, or the particular large event. So for example, UK, then it'll be broken down into London or Bath, and then even further, you can have, let's say, North Coast 500 road trip. When it comes to where everything is stored, so all of the files are stored in Adobe Cloud. That's kind of the master storage area. Um, on my laptop, I store locally the smart previews. On my iPhone, I also store the smart previews. And then on the external SSD, that's where all of the originals are stored as well. So when I edit the photos on my laptop, I can plug the SSD into the laptop and then I will edit directly on the original photos. If I don't have the SSD with me and I wanna edit a photo, then Lightroom will pull that photo from the cloud and then I can edit it before it pushes it back up to the cloud afterwards. Equally, if I am out and about and then I forgot my SSD at home and I need to import a bunch of new photos, it will import them onto the local hard drive of the laptop. I can do all the edits I want. It will send them up to the cloud. And the moment I get home, I'll just plug in the SSD and it'll automatically transfer the photos from the local drive to the SSD. So effectively, I have multiple ways of editing my photos on the laptop and on my phone. To set all of this up, simply go into the local storage menu in the preferences on Lightroom, in Lightroom, on Light, in Lightroom, and there you can effectively say, you know, store local smart copies and then store the originals and then define the location. In my case, it's my SSD. For the most part, I'll always try and import everything directly into the laptop with the SSD attached straight away because then it just saves, let's say, extra work later down the line. However, if I am traveling somewhere and I don't have my laptop, or maybe I've been out shooting in London all day, I'm on a train home and I just have my phone, I will import everything into the phone where I can go through the photos. Either way, the most important thing that you need to do before you import anything is to switch off sync. Because if you don't, and you've just imported, you know, 800 photos from your day's shoot, it will try and sync all of them. And it's just a bit of a hassle. Once you've disabled sync, just let everything import into whatever folder that you want it to go in. And then you can start culling through it. On the iPhone, it's very easy because you can just swipe up or down to reject it. Um, and then on the MacBook, you just press X. So I'll go through all the photos. I'll just reject the ones I don't like and I'll delete them. I'll then go through the photos again, but this time I'll apply one of my presets and just get an idea in which direction I want to take my edits. Once I've done that, anything I still don't like gets deleted. And then I will do a very, very basic edit on all the remaining photos just to make sure, you know, nothing's too blown out or everything's about right and the preset works. Anything that doesn't work gets deleted. I'll then empty the trash and then sync whatever's remaining to the cloud. In some cases, if I have a long enough train journey or not that many photos, I would have done all of that on my phone. And by the time I get home, open my laptop, um, the photos are already there. If not, and I've done it on the laptop, I'll usually try and give it a bit of time before coming back to the photos, just so that I can come to them with a bit of a you know fresh look at them, um, and then do any kind of final edits and make sure I'm happy. 
If there's a particular photo that needs a bit more editing, such as cloning something out or cleaning up, I will open it in Affinity Photo as a full size TIFF, do the editing I need to do, import it back into Lightroom and then group it as a stack with the original raw file. The final task is simply to just rate the photo, add some keywords and then sync everything back up to the cloud. And that's basically it. As it stands, I already have a fairly robust system when it comes to backups. I have smart copies on two different devices. I have original physical copies on the SSD and I have a copy in the um, Adobe Cloud. However, let's just assume that the entire library corrupts. It can happen. Now, even though I still have the originals on the SSD, they are not organized in the same way that I would organize it in the library. They're organized all by date. Um, so if that happens, yes, I've got my originals, but that's gonna be a, such a pain to go through them. Can you imagine that? So what I do is I then take my hard drive, so the non-SSD normal hard drive, I guess, the long-term copy one, and then I will have the same folder structure on there as I would in Lightroom. And once a month, I'll just offload all of the raw files plus the settings into that hard drive. So if the worst happens, the library becomes corrupt, I no longer have to then spend probably 20 years going through each single of my five or 6,000 files and then putting them into new albums all over again. I mean, touch wood, it never happens. I don't think it will happen, but you never know. The final stage is to export and to share the photos. So I'll export them as full size JPEGs. I'll quickly import them into Apple iCloud Photos, which has the same library layout. I'll also airdrop them to my phone. I don't actually sync my Apple Photos library to my phone simply because it'll just get a bit too confusing because every time I take a screenshot of somewhere I wanna go, it'll add it to my uh, library. So I'll just airdrop it to my phone and then I can put it into Darkroom if I want to add some white borders or I'll put it into Unfold if I want to make an Instagram story. And then just share to Instagram or Twitter or wherever else. That's about it. I hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, please leave it a like. If you have any questions, please leave it down below. Um, at some point soon, I will be doing a iPad versus MacBook video as well um, for photo editing. So if you do have any questions about that, please write them down below. Um, and that's it. So thank you ever so much for watching. Hope this video was useful and I'll see you soon. Bye.